Hello everybody, um, it's been a while since I've done a video on our grazing, um, we've got all of the cows out of the sheds now um, and the grass is absolutely flying so I thought I'd do just a quick update now we're about a month on from turnout. So I'll just demonstrate how quickly the grass is growing at the moment. I'm going to do a little pan around. This was grazed yesterday. I've just moved them. So as we go, day before, day before that, you get the drift. And that bit was grazed 11 days ago. So 11 days growth between that and that absolutely flying tumble wheels still working really well you can probably tell by the state of some of these paddocks that it has not been a dry 11 days but this is all very much superficial. In a week or so, this grass will be flying like the previous paddocks and you won't even know that they got slightly poached. Now, I'll go and show you how this is the case. Um, we'll pop over to the field that we grazed about a month ago when it was soaking wet back in April and you'll see how the grass has recovered um, from the poaching. So this field was one of the original ones we turned cattle out into back in April. So we've just bought some cows and calves back on here now. Um, this paddock was last grazed, would have been 33 or 34 days ago. Um, and you can see, you know, they've gone into plenty of grass. But really, this is the area of field that's quite interesting. So this was what we were grazing back in April when it was absolutely hammering it down with rain. And these sections of the field were more mud than grass. Now I don't tend to take photos of stuff when it goes too badly, but perhaps I should really. Nevertheless, I did get these couple of drone shots. And as you can see, the paddock next to the oak tree got a fair battering um, one evening when we had torrential rain. So here we are next to the oak tree now, and this is that paddock now. What a recovery. So you can just about make out, there's a few hoof marks, look. Where it got a bit wet, but look at the grass now. And that is the power of rest. And when the heifers were first in this field, they obviously started in here and worked their way round to there. So there's a few days worth in there. So that paddock is what, 25, 24 days rest. So mega. Anyway, time to go around again. So now we've got a bit of sun and we've got a bit of warmth. It's allowing me a lot more grass to play with. So I'm able to leave a lot bigger residuals behind. So I'm about to move this lot onto there. And this is the sort of thing that I'm leaving behind. But that's a waste of grass! Ah! No, it's not. This bit that they're trampling into the ground is building organic matter in our soils, making them more resilient to periods of drought or periods of prolonged rainfall. They're only taking the best bit of the grass and leaving the lower quality stuff behind, meaning the cattle are performing better. We haven't got any bare soil. It's 
all covered by this nice mat of longer grass so we're not exposing it to intense sunlight or heavy rain keeping that happy except for the molehills and we've got loads of leaf left behind so that means that this grass will immediately start photosynthesizing and regrowing meaning that the next time this lot come back to this field the grass is actually going to be ready to be grazed again. This type of sort of skim grazing is also a really good way to improve the sward diversity in these permanent pastures. So, same field, different paddock. I was busy the day they were in here or something and I never got around to moving them until late in the evening and they absolutely skinned it. So they've grazed everything right down to the ground um, poached up a bit and left nothing behind. Now, conventional wisdom would say that's a good clean out, but that's not what I'm trying to do here, so I want to try and avoid stuff like that. This is what I'm talking about. So, if the cattle are moved off a paddock a bit quicker and they don't graze it right down to the ground, it means that some plants in the sward avoid getting grazed and that allows them to complete their life cycle and go to seed. Meaning that next time this lot comes stomping through the field, they'll knock the seeds out of the plants, trample them into the floor and start regenerating our pastures. And then we end up with fields that look like this. With nice stuff in like plantains, sorrels, clovers, vetches, knapweeds, the list goes on, rather than rubbish that looks like this. And there's benefits to all this diversity in our pastures. It means that our swords are more resilient to things like droughts, like I mentioned earlier, but it also means our cattle are happier because their rumens like our diverse diet just as much as the soil does. So we've got plants that act as natural amphalamintics. We've got plants that bring up different minerals and nutrients that they deliver to the cattle. We've got plants with higher protein in. We've got plants with anti-bloat properties. You know, the list goes on. So it's definitely worth the hard work grazing like this to improve the diversity within our pastures. Aside from all that, it looks really nice and it keeps our pollinators happy when the plants in the sward go to flower. Anyway, we'll get this lot moved. Oh, come on in, old girl. Oh, you pest. The trials and tribulations of moving fences. Beautiful. So obviously mob grazing doesn't work unless you have water points in the right place. So that involves a lot of this stuff um, and it involves moving it around every now and again. So I'll quickly just show you how I make that job quicker and a lot easier. So there's our water pipe going off into the middle of a field where I wanted it. Um, that's plumbed in old redundant water tank from when we used to set stock. Um, the water's plumbed into there. So I'll just turn him off. So I've just split the pipe. Basically, I want that stretch to take to another smaller field. Um, that length runs off to a bit of a dog leg in the field to service up there. But for now, I'm taking this. So that's where that old thing comes in handy.
So that's just part of an old tap or something um, on one of those rubbishy fittings. Um, and what I've done is just drill a hole through it, attach a bit of rope. That then goes around the towing hook on the quad bike, fit it to the pipe, and you drive off and drag that along with you. Because if you've tried moving that stuff by hand, especially when it's still got a bit of water in, it's hard work. So quad bike makes light work of it. If all of that hasn't bored you to death and I've still got a few people watching, I'll quickly just show you what's going on with the sheep. So this is our main group of doubles. Um, we've got a few more to put in here yet, but as you can see, they are currently in the jungle so this is the direct drilled herbal lay that i've covered in previous videos and it is just out of control what they're busy grazing in here now is literally two weeks rest from a residual that looks a bit like this so this field is absolutely flying and before they came on here, the lambs were looking a bit sorry for themselves. I think the wet April didn't do them much good, but since starting in here, they have picked up no end. And as this is a new lay, there shouldn't be any worm burden at all. The sheep and lambs are getting massive amount of grass and the sun's out. So these lambs should absolutely motor now. They'll whiz down to the end of the field and then we'll run them back to that end and start them again over by that hedge, probably in about two weeks' time. Anyway, I hope that was interesting, educational, maybe rubbish. If you liked it, give it a like, subscribe if you fancy it. Um, until next time, cheers.